Hello guys, for quite some time you've seen me using this uh, prototype controller and it was the prototype for a PCB that I wanted to make and finally I've gotten round to making that PCB and today we're just going to take a look through what I've added onto this little uh, controller PCB well it's not very little, it's pretty big but there's a lot of features on it So this is like a version 1 of this board so the idea is really to get an idea of the sizes and kind of get an idea of uh, how the program worked really because I hadn't used the uh, program uh, that I used to design this before I used a uh, keycad to do this so with this I kept it simple just a big square design I tried to get the buttons and the controls in round about where I thought they would feel right but without actually having the physical PCB it's very hard to tell where things are just by uh, rearranging stuff on the computer screen you know I'm kind of guessing the physical heights of things and where it would be comfortable it seems to have worked out alright the joysticks feel like they'd be in the right place and sliding pots might be a little bit of a stretch for the inside ones but it seems okay really uh, lots of switches easy access to the switches uh, row of additional switches here uh, I also included an LCD uh, just a a 16 by 2 character LCD and some buttons to control that as well uh, I added in the little uh, dip switch here I added that on the top here as well uh, potentiometer to adjust the contrast on the LCD uh, obviously the two joysticks go here the sliding potentiometers four of them I had a load of pins left over so I just left this like a kind of a header that you can add extra things to it if you wanted and then we have the power socket uh, I think I had two wires for a battery if you didn't want to use the DC socket and then just a, a switch and that's pretty much all there is on it so I don't actually have all the parts for it I uh, don't have the sliding pots I need to order those but I do have uh, lots of joysticks and switches and pretty much most of the different parts I can populate oh the radio module goes here as well I forgot to say that so what I think I'll do is start populating the PCB and then write a program for the well to use the controls that I have I know I'm missing the sliding pots but that shouldn't be a big problem we can get them later add them later and um, I'll get the program started what I think I'll do is write like a library to control this so that uh, all the features are kind of hidden in the library or all the the complicated code is hidden in the library and you just have to call whatever function it is like say the, the LCD you don't want to have to copy and paste all that code every time so if I just include it in the library it will be much simpler and uh, then if you guys want to make a similar controller all you will have to do is uh, use the library and it should make your life a lot easier ok well the first thing I'm going to start with is the headers because they're going to be pretty low profile things so I'll cut the headers to the right side solder them in and I'll kind of move around doing the low profile parts first and I'll probably end with the joysticks because they're going to be the highest and the, the sliding potentiometers they're going to be the, the highest parts that I have so you see they're going to be something like that whereas the header is only going to be this tiny little height here It'll just make it a little bit easier if I do it that way. So I need to cut the header to the right size first. I've pushed all the header pins uh, through the PCB now. So I've put the long end uh, going through the PCB. So all I do is flip this over and put it flat on the table. Then I should be able to solder all the pins from this side and snip the long pins down. Then once that's soldered, flip it over again and um, put the microcontroller on. Solder that in place. There's the headers fixed in place. I just need to snip those down at the back. I'll do that later though. I'll probably snip all the things on the back at the end unless say uh, I need to. So the microcontroller can just sit in on top of these headers now. I think I'll solder the microcontroller on last just in case I find a problem with the board uh, before I finish this. So that um, I don't solder this on and then have wasted the microcontroller basically. It would be a pain to desolder all of those pins. I had been planning just to use these uh, normal small kind of push buttons but 
I have a bag of these ones with the longer kind of reach on them so I might see what they're like because that'll bring them up closer to the height of the of the um, sliding pots and the joysticks might be a little bit more comfortable to have the the longer uh, piece of plastic on the on the on the button there I incorporated the dip switch that I had on the other uh, controller I used to use that for uh, switching between the models but I don't think I'll really need that now because I can do it with the screen I can just like you know hit up or down and select the tractor I want but I'll include that anyway I might be able to figure out some use for that as uh, as time goes on the next thing to go on is the radio module so that's gonna go there and then have a little capacitor here which is supposed to be like a little reservoir to make sure that the um, NRF24 radio module doesn't cut out at any time so that there's enough power uh, available to this all the time so that's why this capacitor is pretty close to the uh, power pins of the NRF24 module the closer you have it the better it should work there's the radio and its capacitor in place so the next thing I think I'll do is the power so I have a power switch here I put that in there and also I have a DC jack so I'll solder that on there as well there is another uh, little socket there for a battery connection uh, I might put that on um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to wire that yet so I'll, uh, I'll have to think about that one down here is just a little header for like an expansion if I need to add any extra uh, controls to the board so I'll put that bit of a header in there like that it's a little socket that will take a ribbon cable and it looks like I might have put this hole too close to uh, this header I didn't realize it would overhang so much but on the other side looks like we might have trouble with our sliding pot let's just check that out nope that just about fits in so I think that'll be all right I'm not uh, I've no immediate plans to use the the mountain holes for anything so I'll add I'll add this header on here as long as that sliding pot is flat that's all that I really care about so that should be okay now I think I'll mount all the um, push buttons so there's quite a lot of them around the board so I'll just push them in they kind of click in because they've got a little uh, bend on the leg of the of the button so they kind of click in there so I'll put all them on solder all them in place and it's going to take a while because I've actually got a lot of switches on this then after that it's probably time to put on the sliding potentiometers there's all the buttons in place now so next thing I'll do is put on these uh, sliding potentiometers so we four of those should give us plenty of control go in like that and just solder them in place nearly done now the next thing to add is the two joysticks so they'll go in there the next piece I'm going to add is the LCD here you can see on the LCD here there's uh, four mountain holes in the corners but they've only been marked on the silk screen of the uh, PCB here so obviously when I was designing this PCB the part that I chose for this LCD didn't have the the holes through the PCB but I didn't notice that but I don't think that will matter too much um, I'm not going to be throwing the controller around so soldering it down with just a header will probably be fine for me uh, but it would be good practice to um, hold the LCD in place with its mounting points normally there's one piece missing up here which is the um, potentiometer or the, the variable resistor that controls the contrast of the LED but I don't have one to fit that yet so I'm just going to skip that and the last piece then is to include the microcontroller so I just have to solder this Arduino in place and then program it and hopefully this controller is, is finished then feels pretty comfortable I need to get the, the caps I have lots of caps for these joysticks I've ordered um, caps for the sliding potentiometers too but as it is it feels like a pretty good well it feels like a pretty comfortable controller to uh, use even though it's quite big but we can probably uh, perfect the design later and maybe shrink it down a bit 
uh, but a bit more shape to the PCB. I was just um, I was just picking a shape that was going to work for sure. That's why it's just a big rectangle. Uh, I was more worried about getting the circuit working. So this should uh, prove that the circuit works. And then all I have to do is move it to a, a better design of a PCB. When I went to program the uh, controller here, I came across a problem straight away. You can see that I've had to remove two of the buttons here. Now, my original plan had been to use these small buttons and that the USB would just uh, slide over it. But now that I see it in reality, the microcontroller is a bit lower than I was expecting. And I don't think that would have worked anyway. So, for the next version of this controller, I'm just going to have to uh, increase that gap there. Just leave that gap for the buttons. And that's actually a little bit better because stretching to the middle ones is a little bit difficult. So if you're here, here and here instead, that's a, a little bit easier to uh, to reach. But other than that, uh, it was okay. So I removed those two buttons. That let me program it. And then I discovered that it wasn't working. And I, I had to diagnose what was wrong. So because we had an LCD here, I was able to send, um, or I was able to write the values that I was trying to send on the LCD. So because I could do that, I could see that my potentiometers were working, and that the data was arriving uh, at the micro or at the radio end uh, correctly, at the radio part of the code correctly. So that told me that the problem wasn't with the potentiometers, uh, wasn't with the Arduino, that it had to be on the radio side. So you can probably see here that the radio is now in a socket. So the reason I added this socket is I thought maybe the radio module was getting too close to the ground. So you can see here our uh, ground and stub seems to be just at the level of the ground. Maybe no, I, I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't uh, simulate this or anything. But maybe the close proximity to that ground plane is making the antenna effectively, or the ground plane effectively, appear to be here somewhere, which would um, shorten our antenna by around about a millimeter. So our frequency would go up because our wavelength has been shortened. So if that was the case, we might have shifted the frequency off just enough that we were missing most of the packets coming from the the radio here. So after I added this socket that moved the antenna up it was kind of working a little bit intermittently. I noticed that uh, if I tapped the tap the the contacts or the pins as I was sending that it was sending the data no problem so if I held the thing uh, held the joystick in a position and I just tapped that the data would send no problem and I've seen that before and I put it down to previously that um, the power was dropping out so uh, I had this 10 microfarad capacitor in here and I replaced it with a 470 microfarad capacitor and that seems to have solved the problem so now it works perfectly so those are examples of things that uh, you can have to do when you're designing a PCB you mean you you get it you expect it to work but you know you haven't had this PCB before so there's always uh, possibilities that you got a pin wrong got a pin backwards or wire backwards or that there's something in the design that doesn't work on the PCB that worked on your on your uh, breadboard maybe you've made a PCB trace uh, much longer than the wire was on your on your um, breadboard and now there's more noise on the line you know things like that can happen one big blunder that I made on my very first PCB was I got the ground and the positive contacts backwards on the DC jack going onto the PCB. So that was a pretty silly mistake to make, but apparently it's a quite a common uh, mistake. So be sure and check which way your um, DC contacts are on your DC input jack. So I haven't got the code perfected yet, but I do have enough to demonstrate the controller working, so that's what I'm going to do. Plug in the DC jack, and now you can see, maybe you can't on the camera, yeah, those are all the hex values that the uh, controller is sending. And I'll turn on the tractor here. 
you can see we have control of our model, no problem. So ultimately the controller is working fine. Control of our lifting arms. So if we take a look at the lights on our tractor, if we push S2, there's our lights are on and there's our work lights. So that's all I have uh, programmed into it at the minute. Obviously the plan is to have a kind of a menu on the screen here so you can see which tractor you're selecting. Uh, you're not just needing to flick these little switches. You can say, uh, I guess we'd have a menu option tractor, tractor select and no, maybe vehicle select then you hit the select button that brings you into that menu then you can go up and down between the John Deere and the Massey and the John Deere 9560R and then select the one that you want to control that is ultimately the idea I just need to work out how I'm going to do all that in the code but I should have pointed out we have power switch on this controller it's a very nice feature that I never added to the other other controller also these pins here they were, or well the holes were for, say you mounted your battery in here somewhere, you know you had a, you built some sort of a frame for your controller and you held your battery in there, you could wire that into the two pins there, that was the plan. But when I was trying to diagnose the problem I needed to uh, remove the, the uh, little power brick as a source of, well a source of the, the problem. So I soldered the two pins here so that I could power it up from the battery because um, you know don't forget a power supply is going to be a switched mode power supply so it's going to have oscillators inside it so there's the possibility that the oscillators in the power supply aren't very good and are sending noise up to the rest of the controller so that's why I added in the battery and you can see obviously it works fine with the battery too. Uh, this is 7.4 volt battery. I was using the, uh, I think it was a 12 volt power brick a minute ago, maybe 12 or 13 volts. So that's kind of the range. It's kind of the normal range for an Arduino Mega. That's uh, that's what you're doing there really. That's what you're inputting. And I sh should say that the uh, power brick, that um, AC to DC power supply, that uh, wasn't causing any problems. Uh, all the issue was down to the capacitor size and this uh, space into the to the board. Uh, another benefit to this um, socket here is that you can take off this module and replace it with the the high power NRF24. There's an NRF24 with a low noise amplifier and a power amplifier, so power amplifier for sending signals, low noise amplifier for boosting your signal so that you can uh, get rid of the noise really. That would be for long range uh, applications because Obviously it doesn't matter what you're controlling, this is just a controller, you could control a, a helicopter or a plane or a drone, anything you wanted really. Uh, well, as long as you had enough controls, but there's very few commercial RC controllers that come with these many controls I think, so I'd say you can pretty much control anything. So that's my first version of an RC controller, something I've wanted to do for a long time. The prototype controllers work fine, but I always uh, intended to make my own PCB, and I think I was overcomplicating the design for so long, so I just decided I was going to do it and get the first version, find out what bugs were in the first version, and then uh, modify it. But it would appear that the only bugs I've spotted so far are these two, uh, are these two push buttons in the. Well, not in a great place, not in a great position, so I'll just need to move those out. So that's a very minor problem. Um, the other thing is this socket here. I haven't tested it out yet, so I'll do that in a future video. Uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is hook up my... Uh, I'm not sure if I showed it on the channel before. I used to use a, a PlayStation steering wheel and throttle and brake to uh, drive the tractors. So what I'm going to do is just uh, make a socket or a, a cable from that that will plug in here. That will mean that we can control the tractors via the um, steering wheel thing by just plugging it straight into one of these. So you can expect that in a follow up video. I'll also probably get the menu working on the screen at some stage and uh, well I will get the menu working on the screen and the rest of the controls here and I'll show you it working. Because for example the baler it is going to need a few more of these controls that the um, 
that the prototype controller just didn't have so I'll be able to control all the models with this the excavators obviously I just need two sliding pots and the joysticks and um, yeah so I should be able to control pretty much all the models and all the attachments with this uh, controller so if you liked that video don't forget to hit the like button and um, if you have any comments or any suggestions uh, either post them below the video or post them in the forum and I'll probably start a thread in the forum just to see if uh, people are interested in uh, buying these um, controllers and if you go there and just leave a comment to say you'd be interested that'll give me an idea of the numbers because uh, I don't think I could afford to just manufacture a big bunch of these PCBs and sit on them so we might have to do some sort of a crowdfunding thing if uh, if people wanted them uh, obviously it'd be the version with the buttons moved apart uh, I'll also have to break down how much all the different parts would have cost really but um, maybe it would just be uh, you could just buy the PCB and then uh, populate it yourself or I don't know I'll have to think about how I'd do that so if you're interested make sure you head over there and say you know you you're interested or you'd be interested in two or three or whatever of the PCBs because um, if there's no real interest then I'm not going to uh, pay for the a bunch of PCBs because I can't really afford to do that and just you know buy PCBs and sit on them I'd have to um, I'd have to send them on but if we can do a, a crowdfunding thing where uh, you guys can pay in advance that would be much better and also if there was enough support we can get the PCBs manufactured cheaper so it would be cheaper you know it's cheaper to manufacture say 50 compared to 10 you know so all of that would uh, would help that's pretty much everything about the PCB controller then so thanks very much for watching